Hi there. Uh, welcome to my show this week and let me know in the comments below if you can see and hear me properly. So today in a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to a special guest. You asked for him. I've had so many people ask questions about Danny and requesting that he be on the show. So today he's going to be on the show. So he's just sorting a few things out behind the scenes. Um, because this is something I can't do without him. So he's sorting a few things. My um, social media manager, Milena, is here today to help us out behind the scenes as well. So he's showing her the complicated mechanism that goes on behind the scenes so that she can fly it once he comes on. Um, so before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, I've had someone write in she uh, who asked something to do with her parents and she felt that during the course of her life her parents had always shamed her and made her feel small and they never had time for her they were always busy with their own careers so she had uh, and I think as a result of one of the other videos she's watched um, she felt that when people cross over they are the same as when they are here in life. So basically her question is, after my parents cross over, are they still going to be like that towards me if they appear, if, they, if I can sense them, if I can feel their presence, are they still going to be the same as they were in life energetically? So to that question, I actually wanna say, no, when we cross over, we have a lot more clarity and all we feel is pure unconditional love. The other thing is when we're here in the physical, we have a lot of distractions and we have a lot of um, values, like different levels of values that we place on these distractions. For example, parents might put their career before spending time with their children, believing that making money is the most important thing or the most loving thing they can do for their children when actually their children want their attention. But when they cross over, they actually realize, you know, we are kind of, we judge ourselves or we evaluate ourselves. There's no judgment when we cross over, but we ourselves evaluate what we can do differently. Hey, there's a comment from Sunny Don Johnston. Woohoo! Love you too. Hey, Sunny, thanks for um, th thanks for tuning in. Yay! You'll get to see Danny in a moment. So anyway, so what I'm trying to say is that when your loved ones cross over, they have a lot more clarity and they are much more unconditionally loving towards you. There is nothing that takes priority or precedence over love because all that desire for success, for money, for fame, for any of those things, those are all gone when we cross over. Those are all a here thing, not a there thing. So that's what I really want to make clear. So don't worry about that. And, um, and so when our loved ones cross over, all they feel for us is pure, unconditional love. So you don't have to worry, even if you've uh, had a bad relationship with them, they're not punishing you from the other side. They're not haunting you. You have nothing to fear. I will be doing another short video soon uh, as a follow-up to the one I did last week on the wild side of the other side because we received a lot of questions and a lot of great feedback on that. I loved doing that one and we received so much great feedback, but also a lot of questions. So I will be doing a follow-up. In fact, tune in for that next week where I will be doing a follow-up on things to do with the other side. And I will elaborate more on what I just said about our loved ones crossing over. So now, without much further ado, I want to introduce my husband, Danny Murjani, the man behind everything I do. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have come back. And since he's known that he's going to be on today's show, he hasn't let it get to his head at all. Not even the slightest that he is the star of today's show. You haven't let it get to your head at all, Hello, darling. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's nice to see you. <laughs> 
Hi, hello. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> It's lovely to have you here. Hi, hello, See, everybody. Hi. <laughs> and I should have warned you that with Danny, anything is possible. We did not prepare <laughs> anything today because I know. Hang on, let me get rid of this service. Uh, this this, uh, this 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 get up. You mean that's not who you really are? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not quite. Maybe not quite. I, <clears throat> I think that. Um, hello, everybody. Hi, uh, I'm Danny Morjani. Uh, in case you uh, don't know, uh, I like the other person. <laughs> <laughs> So Danny goes full of surprises, <laughs> hilarious, keeps me on my toes, keeps me laughing, uh, can drive me crazy sometimes. Never know what's going to come out of his mouth, <laughs> but that's just the yeah, way he it, rolls. It, well, that's the thing. I mean, you never know what's actually going to go into my mouth. Is it going to be a <laughs> cheeseburger? Is it going to be a, a ham and cheese sandwich? Or or, a, a, or is it going to be a a torfuki sandwich? <laughs> yes, or even a, a superfood smoothie. <laughs> Hey, now that's an idea. Like, I mean, his, I like my super greens, everybody. I his, do like my super greens. His repertoire mm. is really, really wide. So he will eat anything from super greens mm -hmm. to pizzas, <coughs> burgers, pizzas, whatever. So yes, you have a wide repertoire. A indeed, absolutely. So absolutely. I want to say that you guys can ask me. Oh, somebody named Muna Zambe says, "Danny." <laughs> <laughs> It's like she's cheering for you. Yay! I love that. I love that. Beverly Coughlin, you both emanate an incredibly unique energy. Yes, unique. Unique. Yes, absolutely unique. Yes, thank absolutely you, unique. Absolutely um, unique. <laughs> Ross, Brooks, Ross Brooks, Danny is the bomb. Oh, hang on a minute. Diggity. Hang on a minute. Hang on. We, we, we got to punch this up. Hello, Ross. Hi. <laughs> See, Danny still controls the show from in front. So this is absolutely for those of you that know me, that have actually met me in real life. One of the things you know about me is that I love, love, love my technology, and more than he loves me. Yes, uh, maybe not quite. No. <laughs> maybe not quite. I, th I think you pip my technology by about that much. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's quite a. That's more than I thought. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so when Anita said to me that um, I'm going to be on this show, I thought to myself, but who's going to control the show? And then we thought, well, okay, we'll get Milena Morris to come in and control the show. So everybody, a big shout out for Milena, who's behind the scenes today, by actually running most of the technology. I'm just here pushing a few buttons. Um, Milena, uh, you can even take a photo of what you're doing back there, so people can see how complicated it is. It's like flying a plane, isn't it? Is, it? it is, it is, it is, absolutely, yeah. like, just like flying a plane. Yeah, it is. It's like being in the pilot. Thing. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but I just wanted to say, you guys, you can ask us anything, anything at all. Nothing is out of bounds. Absolutely <coughs> anything. So be prepared. They're going to come up with some tough questions. Okay. All right. I'm absolutely looking forward to these uh, tough questions. I'm going to be looking uh, in the uh, bottom right hand corner of my screen to see what these questions are. And you can pull them up. And so just a little bit of background. Uh, Danny and I, we both experienced being bullied. We both grew up in Hong Kong. We were both in different schools. We didn't know each other when we were kids. And we were uh, both bullied very badly in our own for different reasons, different way. I think it was because of my uh, my hair. Yes, I'm I sure. think so. My luscious locks that caused me to be bullied. I'm sure. People were, uh, yeah, they were jealous of your lus luscious locks. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and when we, and then he met me. We met each other shortly after I'd <coughs> run away from an arranged marriage, and uh, and we fell in love. And, what And she's still talking to me after 23 okay. years. It's 24 next month. 24 years we've been married. What are you buying me for an anniversary present? That's a good question. You have all the technology you can use and some. Can I get a new mouse? Oh, <laughs> as in Mickey Mouse? No, <laughs> new computer mouse. <laughs> If you must. Yay! All right, you heard it here live on. The Anita Morjani Show on Facebook Live. I am going to get a new mouse. 
And there's uh, something. I better stop from... kidding around and actually get to the real question. Okay, there's a Laura Rolkova. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Let's punch that up on the screen and then you can read what it says. I can't. It's uh, too far away. We might have to ask Milena to read it out for us. Exactly. Milena is just putting on her microphone and turning off the little red light on the, uh, on the, uh, on the mixer. And uh, here we go. Hi, Danny and Anita. You are a beautiful couple, and thank you both for sharing this knowledge with us. Anita said, I was made to feel that in order to keep my energy vibration level up, I only had to live in the moment, enjoy every moment of life, and use each moment to elevate the next moment. Danny, you, like most of us, didn't have the NDE firsthand. You only have, I'd say, theoretical knowledge. But you always have Anita with you, and you probably can share with us. How are you able to keep your energy level up, and how does she do it? <clears throat> okay, how do I keep my energy levels up? That's an interesting question. I, it, it's something I just have this innate ability to... Uh, to uh... Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, it's just something I seem to have this innate ability to, um, to not actually go down the, uh, the path of depression. Um, if I can elongate a little bit on my answer. When Anita was sick, um, I think most people expected me, uh, as Anita was getting more and more terminal, most people expected me to uh, seek solace in, uh, in, a, in a bottle of scotch or to, to take up smoking or to find some way to uh, self-medicate. It's not something that I actually needed to do. My, my, my innate um, nature, and I think this might actually come from the the, uh, the fair amount of uh, bullying that I was uh, subjected to uh, as a youth, uh, it just made me more, um, I wouldn't even want to say the word resilient. It is very, very much about living in the moment. Um, history doesn't really matter. What happened a second ago doesn't really matter. What is to come is theory. Um, and it's just, what are you doing now? Um, you know, wh wh one of the things I've always tried to tried to live up to um, is wh wh what am I here to do? I, and I'm here to try and help, uh, and I'm here to just try and put a smile on somebody's face. Um, I, I don't know where that. Um, ideology, the, uh, the belief, the, uh, the, the, the self-calling comes from, but it, it, again, it, it, it's just sort of an innate type of thing that's built into me. I just don't get depressed. I try to get depressed. It doesn't work. It, ask Anita, you know, like I said to her one day, like, I need to go into a state of depression. And she looked at me and sort of laughed at me and wandered off. And, I rolled my eyes at you. Yeah, and I just went back to my office and just carried on doing what I was doing. Um, He's uh, never down. And uh, if I can just uh, interject and just say something on, on your behalf. He never, um, nothing gets him down. And when I was going through the illness and the cancer and so many other things were getting me down. Um, but he was like the light of my life. He would come into the room and I would feel <coughs> uplifted. This is why I advocate that doctors, nurses, health care givers, they need to be uplifted people, not serious, depressed, tired people going in there doing their duty. Because Danny never, ever felt that what he was doing when he was taking care of me when I was really, really sick. I never got the sense that he felt he had to take care of me or that it was an obligation or a duty. It really felt like he didn't want to be anywhere else except with me while I was going through that. It felt like it felt like everything else was a distraction and that I was his priority. And he wanted nothing more than for me to be well and for me to be comfortable and nothing more than to do whatever he could, whatever it took to get me to feel good or to feel comfortable. I mean, it was just quite incredible. It was, he was better than any other, you know, my family member were great. My mom, my brother, they were so supportive, but there's just something about him that was able to 
intuit everything. And one of the things that I have felt, you know, in, in relation to the question about since I had the NDE and you didn't, it was almost like he had those qualities already. And um, so I'm going to say something that we both know, but we rarely talk about. It's almost like we are two parts of the same soul. And it was almost like when he, when we met, he recognized that I was the other part. And it felt like his role in my life was to take me there. So in other words, I needed to get sick to get there. But his role was to uh, give me a purpose to come out of it. And um, I don't know if I'm articulating it properly, but he's, he's always told me that when we, from the time we first met, he recognized me. Hmm. You always say that. It took you a little while. It took me a while. I'd just run away from an arranged marriage. And I was like, I actually said, I'm not getting married to another Indian guy. That's what I said. Yes. <laughs> um, but it took Makes me sense. a while. I thought all Indian guys are like that. I was generalizing and wrong, but um, it took me a while. I was, um, yeah, so I was still hurt from the arranged marriage. I was taking time, but you knew, you knew that I was the one. And, um, Absolutely. And when I say, you know, I've, I've written it in my book, I've always said it, that my purpose is linked to Danny's and I have actually written that if I didn't come back, he wouldn't have been able to complete his purpose. Because when I told him that's what I uh, learned on the other side, and he said, that's 100%. And he said, and he'd said to me in his own words, he said, his purpose was to bring me back. And that was the biggest part of his purpose. And if I didn't come back, he would have joined me on the other side. Yeah. So, yeah. That would have been reallocated. <laughs> Yeah. Given a new job. Yes. <laughs> or we would have been in another <coughs> lifetime together or something. Absolutely. Yes. Shall we? Um, oh, here's another long question. And then in a moment, I think we should show some of our old photos. Oh, OK. All right. But let's take this one. OK. You'll have to read this. My eyesight isn't that good. OK. It says, <laughs> hi, Anita and Danny. Uh, some people tell me that I intimidate men and it makes me sad because when I ask them why, they tell me that it's because I'm too independent and I run my own business and that sort of thing. Basically, my perception is that they think that because of the thing that I find makes me a powerful woman. Um, what do you think about this and what would be your best suggestion on how to handle these types of comments? Thank you both and blessings. Okay, so my suggestion about this is that those are the wrong type of men. If, if those men feel that about you when you are doing what you love, then those are the wrong type of men. Because, um, because I used to get comments like that too when I ran away from the marriage. Oh my God, you should have seen the <coughs> furor I caused. Um, I was ostracized from the community. I was told that I was spoiled. I was choosy. I was told that no man would marry me, at least no Indian man would marry me after what I had done. Um, and I was told that, you know, basically I was brought up to believe that a woman, a woman's value is measured or her worth, her worthiness is measured by how valuable she is to the men in her life. And that if you are too strong, too powerful, you're less attractive to men. That is so not true because when Danny came into my life was when I had decided I'm going to go it on my own. I had decided I don't need men. I'm done. And, and this is the truth. So I decided I'm done. I'm going to go get a career. I'm going to be all that I can be. And so I had kind of struck out on my own got a job, decided I'm going to see where that glass ceiling is and break through it. And I had all these ideas, all these dreams. Um, and it was at that point when I had decided I don't need a man. I'm not going to get married, le least of all to an Indian man, um, because it was all the Indian people that, in my case, in my community that were judging me. And that's when Danny came into my life. And when he told his family that he was in love with me and he was going to marry me, um, his family actually said, oh, my God, that's the woman that has a mind of her own. <laughs> they actually said to him, she's the one that ran away from a marriage. And isn't that the type of person you want to marry? Somebody who's got a mind of their own? Yeah, that's, that's somebody who you said. want to spend time with. 
And he actually said to his family, but that's why I love her. <laughs> so that's the kind of man you want to marry. You want to marry a man that will let you be all that you want to be. Those men are not right for you. You'll be glad you didn't marry them. Be who you are and let someone fall in love with you when you are being fully yourself. And I mean fully yourself. Can I give my advice? Yes, from, from please. Dump the bum. <laughs> Dump the bum. <laughs> Not worth the time or the effort. Find somebody who, somebody find somebody who you're equally intellectual with. Somebody who you can sit down and actually talk spreadsheets with. Um, who understands the meaning of ROI? Uh, I don't talk <laughs> spreadsheets <laughs> and ROI, <laughs> but you still love me. <laughs> you used to talk that way. <laughs> 25 years and this is what happens, you know. <laughs> I was trying to impress you. Yeah, this is true. This is true. When we got married, when we got married, we were both working in the same industry. Yes, Anita, would actually, Anita actually had more experience in that industry than I did. So she was always my mentor. Um, it was like, okay, so you know this industry and you know these clients. Um, What's the best way to go about them? So she was my mentor at that time. You know. Yeah, but it's <laughs> because oh, absolutely. But that's because um, you were working in your family business, and then you left your family business, and then you went into this industry that I was in. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you went into it before we met. So anyway, yeah, it was it was great. So we were in the same industry, and the job I had allowed me to travel. And he would travel and we would align it so that we'd be at the same place at the same time. So, oh, here's a question from Camelia Itchen. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. <coughs> Achim, Achim. Danny, how, you, how did you do that? Not getting tired while taking care of Anita? That's a good question. That's a very good question. And, um, you know, there were... Time is when you do something out of obligation. And then there are times when you do something simply because you want to do it. Now, I was in a situation where this was not an obligation. Um, you know, for me, till death do us part in sickness and in health actually means something, um, which is why I took those vows. And, you know, when Anita was sick, it, it, it wasn't a case of like, Oh my God, now I have to go and make chicken soup. Oh my God, now I have to fluff up the sheets. Oh my God, now I have to do this. Yeah, there, there was none of that. It was simply a case of, okay, my wife is sick. Um, here's a loved one that's sick. What am I going to do for them? Um, what do they need? And it, it wasn't a case of, okay, I just spent the last four years doing something or the last four minutes or the last 40 seconds already doing this. It was simply a case of, okay, what needs to happen now? Whatever is going to happen a minute from now, an hour from now, it's irrelevant. It's what do you need to do now? Um, what's going to make them feel better? What do they need? Now, it's, it's not a case of what do they want, what do they need? Is it just to have their back massage, their pillow fluffed up, their hair stroked, uh, chicken soup? You know, it, it, it really is, for those of you that know um, Mr. Eckhart Tolle, he's got a book called The Power of Now. Um, and for me, it wasn't even, a, a, it wasn't even the, the power of now, it was, just being in the moment, you know, and, and just doing whatever needed to be done in that moment. And because there was no obligation, there was no reason to get tired. It wasn't, it wasn't something that you needed to do. It was just something that I wanted to do. I felt that this is what I want to do. Um, and so so there, was, there was no case of getting tired because it, 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 wasn't a, yeah, it, it wasn't a pull. I wasn't being pulled, I wasn't being pushed. It was just what was right, right then. You I were, hope that makes sense. You were really focused on it as well. He was very focused on what I was going through. That was his 
main focus at that time. Just like when I see you working on something now, like working on editing a video or something, he's highly focused and you can't interrupt him. When I was really sick, that's how he was. He was just so focused on me. It was like nothing else existed. And um, he ha um, Danny has something which is, you know, called Asperger's. I don't say it as a label, but just as something that allows him to understand more about how his mind and his psychology works. And um, he's always in the present and focused in the present. It's like um, if he were to read Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, he will find that he's already doing it by default. You never learn to do it. It's just who you are. Yeah, it's just the way I'm wired. Yeah, it's just the way you're wired. Exactly. Um, let's, uh, uh, let's, oh, Auntie Indra. Hey, hi, Auntie Indra. She's in Morocco right now with Uncle Mohan. Hi, thanks for tuning in. See, you get to see Danny today. That's my aunt, my dad's youngest sister. So she's my favorite aunt. <laughs> um, so let's pull up some photos, shall we, to show them a bit of our journey. Um, so this first photo, this is actually when we got engaged. This was in 1995, March. It was my birthday, 1995. I actually remember it was in, the, in Hong Kong in the Choi Hung Village restaurant. Oh, my God. We've just given a, pl a plug to the Choi Hung Village restaurant in Hong yeah. Kong. In Hong Kong, <laughs> yes. That's where it was. That was us. And uh, I remember that night calling my parents and saying that you and I were getting married. Ah, yes. Yes. And my dad was, weirdly, uh, I called my parents that night. And the very next day was when my dad passed away. And so he never got to come to the wedding. He never got to meet Danny as my husband. And... Um, but so I did go were, up to the house and meet him there. You did yeah. before yeah. before I told them that, yeah. that this yeah. was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now the the next photo is us on our wedding day at the registry office. At the registry, signing the registry. So that was an. I apologize for the hair there. I wasn't as um, I, I wasn't as sophisticated as I am now. <laughs> <laughs> you had some, <laughs> and then. And then the next photo is uh, the wedding, um, us with our wedding cake. That was in Hong Kong at the country club in Hong Kong. And the next one is us doing the feeding, feeding thing. You see, I've always been, hang on one second, I'm going to cut back to, uh, to the live shot. See, I've yeah. always been the caring sort of person. You have. Which you explains, really have. Which is why it explains why I cook the omelets. <laughs> it's true, you do. I cook the curries. <laughs> You cook, he this cooks the omelets, true. I this cook the curries. So true. here's the other thing I want to say um, to women. This one's specifically, actually it's for both. Um, I think that men have it hard in that if a man does a lot of domestic roles, people laugh at him or tease him. I've seen that happen. And women, um, if, if they are better at things that are not domestic, get worried about being judged. So women get worried... Like if there's a man who is better than you at housework, in case in point, um, they are, women are always worried about being judged. And I say, don't be. You know, these gender roles that we assign, they're a here thing. They're not a there thing. You don't carry those roles with you when you die. There's a reason for some weird reason. I don't know the reason why he's better at housework than I am. And I know that... Um, I do windows, <laughs> bathrooms, kitchens, laundry. But don't worry, um, I, I do help a lot and I do cook the curries. <laughs> and we do, yeah, we, we, we do have somebody who comes in and helps us with the cleaning so that you don't have to do everything. I don't have to do that now. I, yeah. can, I can sit here and press buttons. You can press buttons. But yeah, when we got married, um, before I got married, when I ran away from the arranged marriage, I was judged for my lack of housework skills. So women, I just want to tell you, especially if you're from certain cultures, you know, like um, one of the things um, I've, I've realized over time is that don't box yourself. Don't box yourself. It was actually the NDE that taught me that when I crossed over, 
I was not my gender, my culture, my race, none of those things. Those are just labels and boxes we put ourselves in while we're here. So remember that. So just be who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Be who you are. Be who you are. Um, and when I was really, really sick, I didn't have any photos of me taken at my worst, my absolute worst. But when I was at my worst, I had I was connected to an oxygen tank because I couldn't breathe without the aid of oxygen. I was a skeleton. My muscles had deteriorated. I couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair or lying on a bed. My lungs were filled with fluid. So if I lied down, I would choke on my old own fluid. I had tumors, many of them the size of golf balls, especially around my neck and under my arms and all the way down in my chest and in my abdomen. But through all of that is when Danny cared for me. Um, the, uh, I have a photo which is um, which I allowed to be taken, but this was not at my worst. When I was really at my worst, I would not let people see me or have photos. But I'll show you this one, which was taken at a birthday. This was the worst at which I would still, I was still okay with having a photo taken. So, uh, but bear in mind, I was much worse than that. I, I couldn't even, um, I couldn't even stand up. I didn't even have the strength to stand up when I was at my worst. I had to be either sitting or lying down. I couldn't even lift my head up when I was at my worst. My head was hanging down like that. And um, someone named Osk Ingedoter, she says, what a sweet man. Oh, can I borrow him? Okay, so so let me tell you. Yes, you can, Osk. <laughs> but, You'll be sorry. <laughs> Wish, I wish we put up that quote about the magician's hat. That's you. I think you can speak it. Uh, yes, that quote was. So yesterday, my one of my best friends sent me a hang quote. On, hang on, I have a question to ask. Yes. You know, I, 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 I'm, I, I have Asperger's, right? Yes. And I'm very, very bullet point. Yes. So you got one of my best friends. Well, she's <laughs> like a sister to me, Seema. Okay, so this is this... A best friend or a second best friend? Or is this now a different category? She's a different category. She's like family. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I have Asperger's and I need everything in bullet points. Seema. She's here. In fact, she's backstage watching, giggling away at us. So Seema's visiting from London and she's like, she's like family. She's like a sister to me. So she sends she's me from this. from London. I thought she was from England. <sighs> from England. All right. <laughs> it's London, England. Right. So she sent me this quote, which, of course, absolutely reminded me of you. And um, As most things do. remind <laughs> me how it starts. My mouth is like a magician's my, it's, my mouth is like a magician's hat. You never know what's going to come out of it. <laughs> and, that's and, that, and that reminded me of Danny. Um, so, <laughs> yes. But anyway, <laughs> after this, and oh, and the other thing is, I know that after this video, Danny's going to have a huge following. So there's going to be a lot of demands made on you. I'm time. guessing there'll probably be a lot of hate mail. Like, please, no. don't, please don't ever get that guy back on your show ever again. No, a lot of people are going to want you to come. And They're probably going to say, take like, care of them. They're probably going to say, like, look. Go back to the brick wall, right, and the big and the bouquet of flowers. We can rent again. you out. I could tell them a story about that, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that. We'll save. It. Are, are any of you coming on the cruise? If you're coming on the cruise, let me know. Um, and oh, there's somebody who says they're oh. coming on the cruise. Vlasta Pizarro. Oh. Hang on and, one Anita, I second. I can't wait to spend a week with you on the cruise next year. I just want to hug you and most probably I'll get a bit emotional. Oh, you're so sweet. I love hugging people. And you can even hug Danny as well. But I love hugging people. Thank you. And yes, and so if any of you are coming on the cruise, so sorry. to I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, no. <laughs> if any of you are coming on the cruise. Yeah, something about coming on. The anyway, we'll talk about it later. We'll right. talk about the cruise soon. Yeah, exactly. It's right. about renting you out. That's how it started. Renting or people can borrow out. you. On oh. the cruise, they can probably borrow you. As a flotation device. <laughs> 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 
You're so weird. Should we go back to the photos? Yes. If you okay. think we should go back to the photos, please write in the comments now. Photos, please. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. now we have Zoe Greenwood says, please, can you tell me your views on meeting your soulmate? Do you believe couples are destined to be together? Did you know Danny Anita was right for you straight away? What advice do you have for people looking for their life love partner? Many thanks. Okay, what's your take on that? <laughs> Let's see. Do you... Um, Melania, could you punch that one back up again? Okay, go, go back to the it's computer, gone. right? And, uh, and scroll <laughs> backwards. Uh, you'll see a little red arrow next to it indicating you punched it up already. <laughs> Forget it. All right, okay. It's okay. Okay, all right. So, soulmates. Um, soulmate. will, you, will you always meet up with your soulmate? Do you think it's destined? Do you think it's destined? Um, do you think that they are meant? To, did we know? Did you and I know from the time we met that we were meant to be together? Well, I knew. You knew. It took me a little while. Well, you'd forgotten. You I'd had other forgotten. things on your mind. It was because I was going through stuff. Absolutely. You know, I was going through being ostracized and all that kind of stuff. Yes, but I spent years being ostracized from the Indian community. Not oh, no, sorry. running away from the sorry, marriage. I ostracized them because <laughs> yeah, the values didn't quite work for me. It was uh, very strange. I can't understand So he why. was. he was also... Yes, ostracized, cast out. That's why we were such a good match. Absolutely. We, we both didn't fit in. We both completely understood what it was that society mistakenly expected from us. Social and cultural norm. Well, actually, no, it wasn't Zoe social. Zoe Greenwood. Here's, it, the, here's the comment again. Okay. Well done, Milena. All right. Please <laughs> have your views on your soulmate. Do you believe couples are destined to be together? I think that they are. But sometimes they just forget and yes, I think so too. They just forget. I, I, I think eventually they will, they will, because if, if they don't recognize each other at the first crossing of their paths, it'll happen at the second or third it's or, true. or fourth crossing of the paths. Yeah, because... How the, many times did you and I cross paths? And I'll tell you the first time that we crossed paths, and I don't know if you remember. This was at a ball that we went to. It was for Diwali. Yes. You and I were sitting on the same table, right, separated by, I don't know, three degrees of separation or two degrees of separation or something. And we didn't know each other. Absolutely. Yeah. And how many was it? Ten years later, our paths crossed again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, eight or ten years later. And then... Um, and then it was, yeah, we, we didn't see each other. And then again, we saw each other. Absolutely. So I actually think it is meant to be. It's meant to be, especially if it's the right one. And uh, I think that, yeah, it is meant to be. I think so. I think so. And what advice do we have for people looking for their li life love partner? I think the advice I would give you is to be yourself. Don't try to look for them. Uh, what is yours or who is yours or who you're meant to be with will come to you when you stop looking and when you are just being yourself. When you try too hard, the, then the person you present is not really who you are. It's the person you want to try, use to, you know, it's the person you're trying to be to impress someone. Um, so yeah, just be who you are. That's what happened with us. I was really being myself. <laughs> I have been myself as well. Yeah. You were, weren't you? I was. <laughs> I think you should be in theater. You're in the wrong job. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 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 You're in the completely the wrong job. What is my job? Being in theater, being an actor. No, you said I'm in the wrong job now. Oh, what is your job now? <laughs> yes. That's a good point. The character in the book. You're a character in the I'm book. A character in the book. Yes, thank you. You're a character in the book. Yeah. You forgot to punch up the uh, lower thirds. I punched them up earlier. You did. Did I you did. punch up yours as well? Of course. Yes. Of course. <laughs> but of course. I know yours is really important. I know people need to know who you are. And Absolutely. Look, yes. Sky Squires. <laughs> The world needs more men like Danny. Oh no, heaven forbid. 
Yeah, what do you think of that? I'll just hold that quote there for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to let this stay until the end of the video. Yes, I think this <laughs> I, oh, is an excellent quote. Oh, wait, it's gone. <laughs> Another quote has come up. Oh, it got <laughs> changed. <laughs> I have someone on my side behind the scenes. <laughs> Where's that one gone? What did uh, you it, do? It, Milena will have to punch it back oh. up again. She'll have to find the one with the... the, the, the Milena is soon learning how to do this better than you. Absolutely. You'll be out of a job. Absolutely. <laughs> Anita Bruenberg, thank you so much for your inspirational, pure humor takes and quotes. Read your books and watch your videos. Love you doing also videos with your husband. Oh, thank you. It makes me feel so happy and energetic. Thank you so much. You have supported me more than you ever realized. Love from the Netherlands. Wow, thank you. I promise you I could not be doing this without him. And You'd be doing it much better. <laughs> Yeah, it would be me and Milena I wouldn't and Roz. I wouldn't be interrupting you constantly. You, you'd be delivering your words of, of wisdom. <laughs> I think today it's about you. Idle banter. <laughs> I'm the one interrupting you. Today it needs to be about you. Ah, right. <laughs> Zane Blum. We are all characters in the big book. Yes, we are. <laughs> Jess and then the cat. You are so funny and beautiful together. <laughs> It's, it's my luscious locks, you see. Uh, and it's your shining personality. It's my shining personality that's coming through, absolutely. <laughs> ah, hang on, I'm going to punch this one up. This one. <laughs> yes. Somebody's saying you have a, you have a possibility. Not me, you. You, you have a career as a comedian. Really? It doesn't say Danny. You know? It does. It does. She means you. The show's about you today. So what advice would you have, I guess, for people who are going through, um, who are taking care of a loved one going through an illness? Ah, okay. I, I, I think that the, the most important thing is, um, yeah, I think the most important thing here is to take a step back from the situation. Um, take a breath. You know, I, I, earlier this year, um, Anita was doing one of her um, two-day workshops. I don't know where it was, somewhere somewhere in Europe. And, you know, she always opens it up to Q&A. And one of the people asked the question of, so how did Danny deal with this, um, what you were going through? So, yeah, much like today. Um, Anita actually brought me up on stage and handed me a microphone to try and answer the question for this for this person. And I think that if you find yourself in a situation where you have a loved one, whether it be a, a child, a spouse, a, a partner, a significant other, a parent, a grandparent, whatever, and you find yourself looking after them, the first thing that most people find is that they're, th well, you know, when their loved one comes back or the doctor comes back with a diagnosis of something uh, and it's terminal, the first thing that the caregiver feels is obviously fear and helplessness, powerlessness. And the way I explained it in, in this seminar was Imagine that you and your loved one uh, are with a group of other people and suddenly you're walking down the street and I, I apologize in advance for how this is going to come across. Um, it's, it's November 2018. But imagine that you're in a situation and all of a sudden um, there are bullets flying past you. You're in a situation. Um, it's almost like being in a war and people around you are being, uh, are being struck. Um, you are absolutely powerless to do anything to help, save, protect any of the people around you, let, let alone your loved ones. Um, so you find yourself almost paralyzed with fear 
in, in this type of situation. And I think that if you do find yourself in a situation where you have to take care of somebody, step back for a moment. It's, it's not a case of finding yourself in a war zone. You are the, probably the biggest source of support and inspiration for this person that you're, that you're, that you're caring for. You need to, to find your own grounding first. Um, you know, one thing I would love to do, I'm, I'm going to go off topic for, for a second here, and if I forget, bring, bring me back. But when Anita first um, was, um, was pronounced free of cancer, uh, and Anita started talking about it, there was a gentleman in Hong Kong who rang us up and said, hey, I'd like to take you out to lunch. And yeah, we'd never heard, we, I, I had no clue who this person was, but we had lunch with this person and he was telling us of how 10 years prior, he'd been diagnosed with cancer and his, uh, his spouse had bailed on him. And I thought to myself, you know, bad word, bad word, bad word, but that's one in seven billion people. And a few weeks later, I heard the same story. And was like bad word, bad word, but that's only in three and it's only one in three and a half billion people. And I've continued hearing this story over and over again. You know, when Anita speaks, people come up and talk to me, and tell me, you know, that they were diagnosed with something and their their their, their spouse has left. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, there is absolutely nothing out there that I have been able to find that is a support network for people in, in, in my situation, because there was nobody I could turn to. I, I couldn't turn to our GP, I couldn't turn to our doctors, I couldn't turn to our friends. Every one of our friends was uh, going like, oh my God, it's hopeless, it's hopeless. How, how long does Anita have? You know, it's not about how long does Anita have. It's like, what are we gonna do? Um, and, and, and not what are we gonna do in terms of fighting this, it's like, okay, what are we gonna to do to, to keep them comfortable and, and happy and to put a smile on their face? And I really wish that there was some kind of support network. One of these days, I would love to be able to find time to set up uh, you know, a global support network just for people, you know, whether it just be to come and chat, whether it be to come and do a, you know, a, you know, a, a, a weekend immersive, workshop where you know we will you know work through you know building and solidifying that 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 foundation so that you're able to go back into the situation you know with with a newfound confidence a self-confidence a, a a grounding and to be able to say like you know what we're going to deal with this it's going to be okay we're going to deal with this you know yeah. I, I would love to be able to to do something like that um, in, in, in time. I don't even know how to start. That's beautiful. I'm sure now that you've aired, put it out there, people will come forward. You know, I, I've been saying this for years, but you know, I, I haven't fa quite found anybody yet, you know, who's, you know, uh, thinking along the same line. But this is something that is so, so, so needed right now. None of this like, oh my God, how long have they got? You know, what's the prognosis? Yeah, you know, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a bad word. Here. Well, I'm going to let you imagine the bad word. It starts, you know, the, the first le it's two words. The first starts with the letter B, and the second starts with the letter S. Right? Um, we don't need that type of BS. We just need an infrastructure where, you know, for the for the caregivers, it's yeah. You, know, you guys, right? Us people are the, I'm getting emotional here. Us people are the pillars. We, you know, without people like us, the game's over. You know, we are the ones that we, you guys, forget about me, right? Anita's well, you know, I'm out of the thing. But you guys really, 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 don't bail on somebody who needs, don't bail. It, it's, you need to stay there and you need to support them in whatever it is that they're doing, you know, to be, to be able to, to be able to, to help them because, because you guys 
are the pillars. Anyway, but I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm going off tangent. <laughs> oh, you're remembering of when we were going through that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. People but will come I, up to say, so how long is Anita gone? For Christ's yeah. sakes, guys. It's not about how long is she gone. What kind of, what's her treatment uh, protocols like? For and Christ's sakes, guys. You know. What you said actually reminded me of why, it reminded me of something really important, of what it was that really helped me <laughs> while we were going, going through it, is that he never put any <coughs> pressure on me to get well. The only thing he wanted to do, that's what living in the moment is. It the is. The only thing it he is. wanted was for me to feel comfortable in that moment. Whereas with everyone else, it was all about what protocols are you following? What are you doing now? Huh? It was all about the meds, the drugs, the this, the that. But whereas with, um, with Danny, it was purely about just... Um, it was purely about how you feeling in this moment. Exactly. How you feeling in this moment. Exactly. That's why I was always so uplifted when you were there, because it was only about how I felt in that moment. Every moment, he just wanted me to feel good. Exactly. It wasn't about how long I had left, or the meds, or the drugs, or the anything to do with it. And I think that's the kind of support people need. That is the type of support they but need. But also what's important is for the caregivers to get support. There needs to be a, a support group for the people supporting those who are going through illness. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going through an illness for four <coughs> years. That's no joke. That's a long time for you know, someone to deal with. It. I, I, I've, I've met a couple of people over the years who said that, you know, their spouses, loved ones, whatever, were going through something terminal, but, you know, the, they came out of it. And, um, you know, and, and, and I spoke to these people and there was something in common that we all share. There's a, there, 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 there's a, there's a common trait that we share. And part of that is coming from uh, a traumatic childhood, whether it be bullying or, 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 or what. Or abuse or, or, or abuse or what have you. Because that is what strengthens us. Yes. That is our foundation. That is where we realize that which does not kill us is going to make us stronger. And so in the face of adversity, we are able to come up and say like, okay, there's a situation. Let's deal with it. Let's just go into it moment by moment and we'll make it through. And I'd like to extend an invitation for anybody else out there who has found themselves in that type of... I'd love to hear from you. Reach out. You know, on Anita's website, there's a, there's a, there's a contact us. Just go there, right? And it all gets routed through Anita's, Anita's office and, and, and her assistant. Um, but just put on there a little thing like, for Danny, right? And it'll get routed to me. I would love to hear, you know, from, from people who've, um, you know, who are, you know who, who, who've, who've been there. Right? And I don't know, maybe we'll get together and set up that support network because, you know, there is a need for that. You know, I, I, I hear people bailing on their spouses and I... <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, it just that makes, was, yeah. That was beautiful. Thank anyway, you. we digress. We no, digress. No, that was very important. And um, <laughs> yeah. And um, we have a, a wonderful comment from Kite Call. Should I put it up? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. I love you both. Thank you for being misfits in the Indian community so you can fit in perfectly in the universe. I love that. I can relate so well to what Danny has been through. I've been there. You are so blessed to have each other. I love your energy. Oh, thank you. Sending love and blessings to both of you. Thank you. The picture's gone a little fuzzy, but that's all right. Um, so I, I noticed a comment. Yes, you're warm and fuzzy. Okay, just I just want a chance to um, answer a question I saw earlier from Bridget Pratap. And I know she asked, don't you guys ever get 
upset or irrita irritated at each other. Me? I never get irritated. <laughs> Can I share with them the story about the first time? So we mm -hmm. rarely ever get irritated or we don't really fight with each other. But very early on in the, in the marriage, I remember one time... <laughs> You remember that. I, I know where this was going. This was, okay, so this this was, was going to bode very badly for me. Okay, so this was really early on in the marriage. And he did or said something I don't even remember. It's so insignificant. But at that time, it hurt my feelings. And like a typical um, sense, super sensitive empath, Pisces, you know, the whole thing. I was like, how could you say that? I was like in tears, bawling. How could you say something like that to me? I'm so hurt. And, and, and so Danny's response to me, to my bawling and being in tears and everything, his response to me was, but darling, you know that, um, you know that I love you and everything I do, <laughs> you said everything I do, um, I do everything that you want me to. I do everything that you ask me to do. So if I've done something to hurt you, it means you gave me the wrong instructions. <laughs> it's true. And I was like, I was stopped dead on my tracks, like halfway through a good cry. I was like, what? <laughs> it's true. So it's my fault that you hurt my feelings? And he was like, yeah. If you tell me how not to hurt your feelings, I won't hurt your feelings. <laughs> Everything I do, I do like what you ask me to. <laughs> tell me what you would like me to do. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. And so real quick, you were there was a couple of other people that commented or answered your question about who's coming on the cruise. There's a how few people. How can you see the questions so quickly? <laughs> I don't know. I just glance at yeah. them and... It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's different. I kind of, uh, I have a, I see the big picture. That's the thing with you author type people, right? You, you dwell in words. We're... You know? I, d I dwell in buttons with logos. With bu I know, <laughs> buttons are daunting for me. I can see words and I can make out the whole thing from a glance. But he has to look at every letter, every word at a time. It's lovely to see a man unafraid to show emotion in public. Thank you, Danny. Oh, Yvonne Dune. Thank you for that. See, and men are afraid to show emotion in public. So that's the next book I'm writing, Sensitive is the New Strong. And men have it as bad as women. They both have it. We've been told that sensitivity is a weakness, but it's a strength. And men are judged if they're sensitive and... Um, and basically women are, you know, oppressed because they've been sensitive. So uh, that's the th new book. So what did you want to, you wanted to say something about the cruise, didn't you? I did, but I can't remember what it was. Oh. <laughs> it was something along the lines of, I hope you guys are coming on the cruise. Um, it's, uh, the cruise is on June 2nd to June 9th, hang on. Alaskan cruise. I have the slide for it. Oh, wow. Yes. Even from in front of the camera. Even from in front efficient. of the camera. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the cruise is on uh, June 2nd to June 9th. I really hope you guys will join us because we're going to make it fun. We're going to create a space for people to be themselves. To, we're going to create a community for people to connect with like-minded people. There's going to be deep meditations. There's going to be, um, we're going to work on healing, on meditation, on, cre on actually taking you through your own NDE and all kinds of stuff lined up, not to mention just the, the eating and the fun and the touring and also, of course, visiting beautiful Alaska, which is on my bucket list. So I hope to see a lot of you join us then. It'll be cold in Alaska. It'll be freezing. I like that. I can, <laughs> I can finally wear my cold weather gear. Any, any last words from you until I see them next week? Mm. They might all demand for you to come back next week. I doubt week. that very, very much. No, I think I it's quite that. likely. Yeah, you see, not a single comment has said like, yay, we want to see Danny back next week. Oh, mm. I'm sure there are tons. Yeah, <laughs> Milena is yeah, Milena's beckoning to me saying there are tons that you can read back after. Tons of people want you back. Hundreds. Hundreds, thousands. thousands, millions. You see, so next week we really will be seeing him with those sunglasses. And yes, it won't have gone to your head at all. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. This was fun. <laughs> oh, hang on. One last comment, I think, before we go. 
Kiara Millman. Hi, I love everything about you, Anita. And Danny, you are a perfect match. Yay. <laughs> I'm color coordinator. Yes, it's my, you are. Uh, yes, and my, even my. Uh, so my, Danny my. is um, also <laughs> colorblind. So I'm colorblind your, and a tone deaf. <laughs> among your list, your repertoire of I'm follically of challenged, <laughs> vertically challenged, horizontally challenged, <laughs> visually challenged, auditorily challenged, and as my teachers in school would all used to say to me, intellectually challenged. No, you're not. You're special. <laughs> Special, yes, that's what they all used to say. Very uh, special. No. <laughs> I'm teasing him. Um, uh, so, thank you all for tuning in. I know this is probably going to go on for a while between us, but, but thank you all so much for tuning in and thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Loved your questions. Your questions inspire me for my topics and video, your questions, your comments, your feedback. I read them all. If you enjoyed this, please tune in next week. I'll have more stuff. I'll be talking more about the other side next week. Um, and please follow me on wherever, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram. So I really look forward to seeing you next week. You didn't tell them to uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Can you say that on Facebook? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say yeah, any Facebook of that. Yeah, Facebook doesn't like YouTube, right? <laughs> you know, you said it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, we better go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>